Welcome to another chapter of In the Keep Podcast. I'm your very own prophet of the drowned god, the Motherload. This show is all about the world of arena first-person shooters, classic FPS games, their legacies, their lineage, and the people who keep that world turning. These are the players, the developers, the streamers, the influencers. It is the will of the drowned god, Cathala, that our communities band together in her cathedral to frag and give one another into oblivion for all eternity. Happy Thanksgiving, all. Hope you enjoy yourselves. But now you know what this means. It is the season of Catholimus, which means Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that shit. If you're doing Amazon shopping, make sure you use our affiliate link if you want to support the show. Also, there's not a whole lot better gifts I can think of than some In The Keep merch. You can find those on our website, inthekeep.com, for all your needs. This episode features my chat with Capelli47, and he is a really cool guy. He's a FPS historian. He's a Finnish Twitch streamer, and he specializes in like all these classic first-person shooter games. So uh, throughout the time with uh, his series, Gold of FPS, he's been playing back through all of the classic FPS games, uh, like Doom and Duke Nukem, Half-Life, everything. And really kind of, I don't know, coming into his own as an analyst of these games and as a, someone who really appreciates and understands the uh, subtleties of this wonderful genre that we all are here to celebrate. I assume you like FPS games if you listen to this show. He's also a commentator for uh, Rocket Jump Zone. And they put on some really cool Quake Champions tournaments and events like that. I'm going to preface this one saying that uh, if you pay attention to me talking in this one, you'll realize that... Uh, Motherload was a little bit motherloaded for this one. I apologize, but I had such a great time talking to Compelli that, uh, ah, sorry, you'll get over it. And also, I owe a small apology to Dave Oshry and Dave Szymanski for something that I say at the end, but, you know, I, th- I think they get that I'm not serious. So without any further ado, let's get in the key with Capelli. Thank you. Well, I'm Capelli47, or Capelli47, as it's just pronounced in, in uh, Finnish, and uh, I'm a Finnish high school graduate, um, pretty much a retro FPS enthusiast, a kind of a doom modder, would would say also a uh, commentator in Quake Champions, and yeah, pretty much sometimes a MIDI composer even, I would say. So, I saw a tweet from Jahar the other day that kind of got really, it really got me thinking because he said something akin to we shouldn't be labeling this genre retro FPS because there are so few yeah. like real FPS games out there. And I don't know, like on one hand I want to take Jahar's word as gospel, but on the other hand I feel like uh there there is a distinction mm. between what we what we are playing and then a lot of what you would call modern FPS because there will never be a yeah. day when I'm covering Call of Duty. You know, that's not going to No, happen. exactly. Yeah, I mean, I've been thinking, like, aside from, like, calling it retro FPS, I've just tried to be calling it also, like, classic FPS. So that, mm-hmm. That's, like, a totally different genre. That's probably, like, the era of FPS. I've always determined it's before Half-Life. It's when Half-Life just, like, brought out the uh, story and the atmosphere of it more. It kind of, like, killed the whole, like, classic FPS genre in single player, at least. And then that's probably one of the reasons that when uh, Quake 3 came out it instead of like releasing a like a classic FPS campaign or like single player campaign it just like focused entirely on multiplayer because that's where like classic FPS was revered towards perhaps yeah i mean there's there's the multiplayer games but there's i mean Half-Life is an excellent uh single player game Half-Life 2 yeah. is an excellent single player game Quake is an excellent single player game uh and that gets ignored i think uh Across the generations, because most people that I know, and that's that's a strong that I know, tend to play multiplayer, you know, Quake World, or mm-hmm. e- even NetQuake at some point. But 
Then we have these uh like dump truck cut type guys that specialize yeah. in the single player aspect of Quake and keep that alive. And I really appreciate that they do that. Uh, I, I've seen you play like through Half Life, through a few yeah. other games of that sort. Yeah, right. I just recently played through Half Life. I'm currently at Half Life Two, Episode Two, as the uh, podcast is going on right now. But uh, let's see. I did play through like basically my Gold of FPS series. I basically started it uh, with uh, I don't know where I basically started my journey in the uh, the whole like retro FPS or classic FPS, if you will. And uh, it's kind of a uh, story I really like to tell because it was in uh, let's see. Well, basically my first FPS what I played was Doom. Pause. 19 years after its release. <laughs> and the thing is, it was in 2012 when I had my uh, my first own PC, which was a crappy Toshiba laptop. And the only thing I could actually run it on was just uh, basically DOS games and everything like that. Mainly Doom. And I just... Uh, yeah, it, it was even like early in... Basically in end of 2011 or early 2012 when i discovered that i was just playing like first flash games and stuff like that on new grounds on and con and stuff like that and then i discovered on new grounds there was like a uh, a doom triple pack version which included doom heretic and hex and the uh shareware versions of all those and i got hooked to doom the most then i just like immediately i don't know got very interested in the uh, the whole history of fps just somehow I feel like we, just, we have a yeah. similar kind of vein here because a lot of people end up playing Doom because it, it won't run on anything. And, um, yeah. you know, people people will, uh, you know, build a computer not knowing really what they're doing. Uh, that was my case. I just kind of yeah. got a, a free computer for a friend. And I didn't quite understand at the time, at least the uh, hardware demands of a lot of modern games, but I was able to play Quake and Doom and everything pretty easily uh, with a pretty basic setup, and that yeah. it pretty much addicted me to that. I don't even want to say genre, but like that style, you know. Doom is... Uh, what What is the word for it? <laughs> like, it, it's perfect. Yeah. It, it will run on any system that you have. Yeah, exactly. So you played it yeah. on a, a Toshiba laptop? Yeah, basically it was like super crappy. I, what I could also run it, it was a, uh, it was like a free to play game. It wasn't even on Steam or anything. You just downloaded it from the net. It was Ace of Spades, and uh, we used to play that before secondary school, which is like basically right after primary school. It's still obligatory here in Finland uh, with my secondary school mates, even, and uh, it was basically fall twenty twelve. Uh, like alongside Doom, I played Ace of Spades then, and when they released a uh, a paid version on Steam, yeah, I, bes- I believe it was like Jagex bought the rights to that game and released it on Steam. That was even better. But like Ace of Spades was also like uh, like part of my real childhood there on PC gaming. But yeah, yeah. So you, I mean, you're the self proclaimed uh, FPS historian. Can, like, yeah. So you started with Doom. Can you walk us through like your journey thus far? Because Gold of FPS, I've said it a million times, and I don't think anyone actually read it uh, thus yeah. far. But I think Gold of FPS is a gem, and you should be uploading it to YouTube so that it stays there permanently. And I'm going to beat your ass if you don't do it. <laughs> it's funny because yeah, you did mention that. Like uh, I have uploaded so far the first uh, season of Calls of FPS to YouTube, mm-hmm. and I will continue before my military service starts in January. I will continue like uploading perhaps all the seasons so far. It's a big work, but still, all the seasons so far to YouTube. But like how the series started was uh, let's see, because I first got to like. Uh, got interested in the whole fps genre and uh, the history of it and i bought like many gems in the genre basically like i started with the ultimate doom and doom 2 then final doom i believe i uh, played tnt evolution on the toshiba laptop then uh, i remember uh, that, watching I, I, you play final doom yeah exactly yeah. yeah i i did not complete plutonium experiment because like because of all the goddamn chain gunners and everything even on like heard me plenty but still and arch files but uh Let's see. Otherwise, I didn't play Quake right after. I only got 
interested in half life only after because I only uh, also on my Toshiba laptop laptop I played Team Fortress Two with a crappy FPS to be honest, and uh, yeah, I also bought like uh, Counter Strike Source in early twenty thirteen when I had done my Steam account in basically late twenty twelve December I believe it was, and yeah, I played Team Fortress Two then bought Counter Strike Source and let's see only after that. Uh, I got my uh, own PC in, uh, let's see, like real desktop PC in uh, early 2014. And I finally could play, well, even better Source games. I did try CSGO, which was very crappy with that AMD something graphics card. It was a Radeon, which I still have. This is still on my PC, actually, like there, but as a secondary graphics card to run on my, like, uh, two other monitors. But also I did buy Half-Life and uh, Half-Life 2, as well as the episodes and the expansions for the first one. And I played through those in 2014 alone. And uh, let's see. Then I, uh, yeah, I really got interested because, like, uh, Half-Life was such a game that, like, really had emphasized the uh, story and atmosphere. Like, Doom already did that, but, like, the uh, maybe already the second time uh, people played Doom, uh, they had already like mastered the uh, the game itself, and nobody actually like people were already emphasizing the like mechanics and, for example, speed running and stuff like that for the uh, the game itself. And yeah. uh, nobody actually just um, focused on the atmosphere or anything like that after the like the first time they played it. But in Half Life, it's really a an experience every time you just play it through, and so you can I'm- really see it in the story and like atmosphere. Yeah, I played Portal first like I, yeah. I got the orange box kind of on a I, I tend to do this with my life is like I'll, I'll buy things based on the legend status of them so like i bought uh, the who uh greatest hits based mm. on the fact not i'd never heard a, the who song that i knew of yeah. other than like uh what's that stupid show called uh NCIS or CSI or whatever. The CSI, yeah, CSI yeah, yeah. Miami or yeah, or New so York. I bought the Who based on like I knew they were a legendary band. I did the same thing yeah. with uh, Led Zeppelin. I bought the Orange Box same way. Uh, the fact that it everybody told me like this is a legendary thing that you have to play. So I bought the Orange Box for PS3 and played through Portal first and then Half Life uh, Two. Yeah and like fundamentally changed my idea of how games should be because before that I'd played like, you know, just console games with my dad, uh, PS2, PS3, well, PS3 more on my own, but like, uh, you know, Duke Nukem, Time to Kill, that was on PS1. Yeah. I played, that was on, yeah, PlayStation 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ghost Recon. I really enjoyed Ghost Recon, actually. I think that should be talked about more. I, I don't, yeah. Know why that kind of got lost in the wayside, but I, th- I feel like honestly, Ghost Recon on the PS2 was like totally worth talking about. And then uh, we we started to see a big shift with the PS3, and that also is adjacent to PC because games started to really get that graphical climb. You know, they got that uh, that new way of thinking about uh, FPS games that we yeah. don't see anymore. And I'm hoping, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I'm hoping that we gravitate back towards the, the classics, or, or at least uh, what what fundamentally makes an FPS fun to play, which is what we're seeing mm. now with the uh, Switch, the Nintendo Switch, as they're releasing Doom sixty four. Of uh, eventually, they will release Doom Eternal, which I'm very excited about, and I, I know you are too. Yeah, I really am. Like the thing is, they've already released like many how would I say, indie retro FPS as well, like Dusk, and uh, I don't know if yeah. Amityville is already on the Switch, but uh, yeah, I'm, I actually don't have Amityville, and I really gotta buy that, but I I am really looking forward to, like, the uh, FPS scene of the Switch alone, like, I don't, I don't even have a Switch myself, but yeah. Yeah, I have one, but it's mostly for my wife to play, like, you know, Luigi's <laughs> Mansion. <laughs> don't... <laughs> Shit that I, I I do care about. Like, I really I do enjoy playing Luigi's Mansion with Mrs. Motherload and all that kind of shit. Mm. But, like, ultimately, like, I am an FPS guy. 
And yeah, yeah Dusk is incredible, but I'm going to play it on PC. I'm not going to fucking buy Dusk yeah. for the for the Switch. Yeah, I already did play it through on uh, PC myself, and I did stream that as well. But like, it's it's weird with the Switch already, like with consoles alone, that uh, I really cannot play a, an FPS on console since it just doesn't feel right, in, in my opinion. Even on like the Switch, it's just like I don't know. It's meant for PC somehow with the mouse controls and everything. It just feels more fluent. Uh, something I've been doing lately is buying up old old uh, FPS games for like the N64 or GameCube to play with my wife because like uh, mm. Rotten Rose she kind of inspired me like she was like uh, my wife's not a PC gamer you know she, yeah. she really is that old school Nintendo purist kind of person she wants to play the games that she knows and she wants to play them the way that she knows how to play them which is with a controller yeah. so I uh, I bought or I should say she bought Quake 2 uh, knowing how much I would love that for the N64 <laughs> and we played through that together. It, it was excellent. Like, I it's hate... It's a marvelous game, actually, on the console, yeah. <laughs> I hate the controls, but ultimately, <laughs> the bonding experience is worth it, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I guess, bigger picture here, for for your sake, I want to know, throughout the whole Golds of, SP, uh, Golds of FPS <laughs> series... What have you grown to enjoy the most? Like of all these games that you've tested out, like you've tested out. Well, I really don't know. It's you know, it, it could be like, it could be the whole series by its software. Because the thing is, like, I really only realized that after I had played through Half Life, because I didn't even own Quake when I uh, bought Half Lives, the uh, the Half Life games, and played through them in 2014. I only realized what was in between Doom and Half Life. It was Quake, and then I, I studied further and Quake secretly mm -hmm. just influenced more than just doom as a whole but like still doom like visually has influenced the whole fps genre as a whole but i mean without doom there would be no quake but quake basically is the uh the basis for like esports and stuff like that it's really fascinating that uh that i just found the uh, the whole genre alone like right after i played through half-life even i find that interesting that you would bring up quake like that because people uh in the mainstream, not not the listeners of this podcast, maybe some yeah. of them, but not most of them, um, tend to think of Doom as the first esport because mm. you know people play multiplayer Doom, and th there yeah, is a significant be. portion of this podcast listenership yeah. that gravitates towards Doom. Um, but yeah, obviously, like Quake, the first Quake, Quake World in particular, revolutionized everything to do with uh, PC gaming and. That engine went on to create so much other shit, which you know, Half Life, and Gold Source Engine, Quake, uh, you know, Counter Strike. Everything was kind yeah. of born of Quake. Yeah. yeah, I've been like with with Quake in general. I've been through as many things. For instance, like for example, like Steam's existence today probably wouldn't like be if if it weren't for Quake. Because the thing yeah. is, like Quake's engine was. Uh, was brought on to Valve by Michael Abrash, who was like uh, also a uh, Microsoft employer. He eventually just like joined Valve with Game Newell and Mike Harrington, just to uh, get the license from uh, its software, John Kyrak and uh, Romero, I believe it was, just at '96, just before Romero had just left, I believe. But in general, they, they just got the uh, the source code and uh, the license for the uh, the engine, and uh, it wouldn't be perhaps. Uh, like without Michael Raprash that we have like uh, Steam today, I believe. Like, or just like it, it is like basically Michael Raprash that just like as all, also brought us Steam and everything like that. Because if like at the time, Val were like looking for a uh, a three D engine or yeah, a three D game engine for their uh, IP, which is like supposed to be Half Life, obviously. But uh, they were like having limited options at the time. It was ninety six. And Quake had already released as the first fully 3D FPS game on the PC, at least. But also, like, Unreal was in the make. And um, before Unreal had actually come out, they would have just, like, had to ask the license, but also, like, pay for it, like, maybe $100,000, because, it, like, it is expensive. So, like, the only option and the easiest option they had was Michael Aprash working previously on Quake. 
And uh, yeah, it's pretty much because of like Quake, because like um, Gold Source and the updates to that were easier obtained through Steam. And uh, Steam, I believe, was first like a uh, an accessory to Gold Source. But if it was actually, if they actually did get a license from Unreal or for the Unreal Engine, uh, when Unreal had come out eventually in 97, 98, uh, and the server browser mod and the installment in Unreal Tournament would just later on provide perhaps all the updates and everything. I could be wrong here. Like, this is not a 100% correct theory, but still, most of the updates to maybe Half Life, their IP, which would eventually just be an Unreal Engine. And eventually, Steam, which today, like, or like in 2003, I believe it was, uh, was supposed to be in. Um, like the service for updates for the gold source engine and the source it wouldn't exist basically yeah no i think that's 100 percent true uh, and yeah we've we've kind of gone over that on the podcast before with messiah but like basically you wouldn't you would not have the the source or gold source engine without quake mm. to kind of be its backbone and it's weird because john carmack is a central figure here and he doesn't get yeah. talked about nearly enough, even though he gets talked about all the time. John Carmack singularly revolutionized this entire genre. Uh, or I shouldn't yeah, even with say three, revolutionized. Three different games. Yeah. Like he created, you know, and yeah, then pr- pretty much created. I would say, yes. Yeah. And I mean, perfected. with three different games. So, um, of the arena shooters, what what do you uh, kind of gravitate towards yourself? I know that you do commentary for the uh, Quake Champions League within Rocket Jump Zone. Can you yeah. talk a little bit more about that? Well, it basically started like uh, my interest in on the uh, the commentating in Quake basically started in uh, let's see, it was last year, perhaps even already in September 2018, and. I don't know. I just like tried to challenge myself. Like uh, I've already like streamed, like on um, Twitch and everything like that, and I can like talk very fluently. But I don't know. I, I wanted to challenge myself, like what it is to cast like an arena FPS game, and I've already seen it's like Quake in general is just like very fast paced and everything. Like even the uh, the prof- professional casters sometimes cannot even keep up with the game, and sometimes they have to like do uh, mm-hmm. analysis in the meantime. But they just have don't they don't have time for that as the next fight's just happening in five seconds. So uh, then I uh, I applied for I believe it was Battlefy, yeah, the Quake community in Battlefy, because um, Flea the uh, however Flea Live was just uh, on a small break there and they didn't have a streamer for their tournaments for a while so i just applied and basically sent my application to feral who was the admin and uh yeah i got my place immediately there I, then i just like continued casting from number eight i believe it was that they had the tourneys there but and i, and I got very good exposure actually that's the reason i got affiliated on twitch i really got exposure and everything like that but uh it was after battle fight when uh, I mean, during even during those, the Quake Open League was going on, I believe, in Season 8. But Season 9 was the season I uh, casted then. And I believe I just... Uh, some some games I casted alone, but some games also I casted with... Uh, or co-casted with Plague, uh, Plague TV and then uh, Taka, who ended up being my co-caster in Rocket Time Zone 2. And yep. uh, yeah, pretty much after like Quake Open League went silent, there wasn't any like casting for me for four months. But yeah, then Rocket Jump Zone came in, and uh, Champ, the admin of Rocket Jump Zone, just asked me and Taka if they just like to do casting because they already had like Champ had already seen our uh, games that we casted at the uh, the Quake Open League. It was in a couple weeks too, and uh, yeah, he just asked both of us, both of us, if you just like uh, eager to re- reunite in this. Uh, this community we have here, he said. No, that's good. And it's been a very um, strange journey throughout the Quake Open League, quote unquote, because, yeah. you know, it kind of died off whenever we had that, that big Christmas patch and then Eisen yeah. came out and everything. And then people were very, um, mm, I'm hesitant to say, um, turned off by Quake Champions in yeah. general. And, I 
I had applied for a similar position uh, in North America with uh, Plague had offered me kind of like, if you want to go cast, do it. And I wanted to, obviously. Um, mm. my, work, my work schedule is a little bit wacky compared to most people's, but I, I definitely wanted to do it. Um, and it didn't end up happening. We ended up with the Quake Pro League in its stead yeah. um, in the Challengers League itself, which is awesome. And I'm really happy that it happened. But I don't know, man. Like the, the entirety of uh, Quake Champions is very much up in the air. It's very um, fluid. Uh, it's very strange. And I, I did see you casting a few times with Quake Angel of Attica, um, or at least. Oh, yeah. 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 That was in, uh, I believe, uh, in her Quake Cafe event. And that was, uh, yes. let's see. I mean, it's still going, but like it's been on a break for uh, like a couple of weeks. But her uh, King of the Hill events were just like the, the work of art, basically. It was just not trying to be any, anything serious or anything like that. Just like fun, fluent, quick and everything like that. It even had the uh, the gauntlet event just before the actual like King of the Hill event, I believe. And I, I was like basically... Well, I did cast the actual event, but in the gauntlet uh, events, I just yeah. was a champion with skill bearer and clutch and everything like that. But yeah, it, it was like even fun casting with Queen Angel. I don't know if she still accepts like um, a co caster or anything like that, but like she's been doing a very good job, like even supporting the community with even tournaments like that. I'm not but sure it's just she's that we have these. I'm really not sure what she's up to. I, I saw her at QuakeCon, uh, had dinner with her and uh, Slip, Unkind, and Dramas all together. Yeah. Uh, kind of sat down. A few other people were involved. And yeah, I don't know. I, I really hope that Quake Angel really finds her way and uh, keeps this going. But it's hard to say, man. Quake Champions is such a, uh, it's, it's just a watery, mucky bridge to cross right now. Yeah, it's it's been like even the player base has to slowly been done. You cannot like yeah. deny that, but it's it's been lacking like big great updates and like it's it's really sad. I do want to get back to the open league. Like it's it's really sad because there were a lot, including me, a lot of those broadcasters that just wanted to like cast and even mm -hmm. well, if not cast, then just stream a uh, attorney. But like uh, there were so many, like all of them perhaps at least most of them got accepted and many, there were like many streamers, but it just like ended up dying. And yeah, I don't know. It is sad that they didn't even get like their opportunity. I I don't know. I mean, like there, there are certain people who did, uh, obviously. Yeah. Play, play I mean, well, at, at including Quake me Con. perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plague ended up at a uh, QuakeCon doing the doom 2016 events, which. Oh yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll let him speak on his own behalf about that, but. The point yeah. is, like, he, you know, he got a little bit of recognition. He got to be on stream, you know, yeah. at, at QuakeCon, which is an honor upon itself. Quake Champions feels like it's falling apart, and I really don't want that to happen. I don't think uh, – there there are a lot of people who want that to happen. Con, uh, congruently, there are a ton of people who do not want Quake Champions to fall apart. So can you kind of uh, maybe walk us through your Quake Champions journey and, like, how you got into Quake Champions and – how you got into casting. well, like, yeah. Well, the thing is, like most people, I started with the Glows beta in uh, 2017. Yeah, it was like uh, June 2017, and I had only like uh, started streaming the game at the very beginning of perhaps 2018. It was yeah. So by I this time, you only... built a better computer than your Toshiba. Yeah, laptop. yeah, yeah. I had <laughs> like uh, the thing is, I even got like a uh, like I still have my Ryzen processor, Ryzen 5 1600, and everything like that. But yeah, I, I finally like uh, had the power to stream it and everything. But previously, like I still had like some performance issues, mm -hmm. even when not streaming. But yeah, I was like, uh, my first multiplayer Quake was Quake Live, and it was in 20, oh god, 2014, 2015, on the turn of that. And uh, I was really bad, to say the least. Like, especially, I, I love to play a free stack, but I was really bad in duels. And I continue to be, like, still pretty bad in uh, Quake Champions in duels. But eventually, like, uh, I don't know, I got my favorite champion and everything. I believe it was, at time, it was BJ Blazkowicz. Then I, uh, yeah, it, basically... <laughs> yeah. During that time, BJ was the boss. Yeah, exactly. It was yeah. basically when I joined, BJ was already out in the close beta. And 
yeah, just basically mostly played that. Obviously, there was the uh, the round duels format, so I just had to play the, uh, the two different champions. It could have just varied from Ranger or Vice or Galena or something like that. And I I played mediocre enough with Ranger and Galena, <laughs> but yeah. BJ was definitely my favorite. Yeah, the CPM champions are were a bit of a curve for me. I'd never played CPM uh, prior to yeah. the champions. And but definitely like the classic uh, Quake Three style of movement, strafe jumping, everything. Champions were uh, easy for me to pick up. So yeah. like Ranger, Galena, as you said, BJ, especially during twenty like in twenty seventeen, BJ was a fucking beast, man. It was you could play yeah. B, you could play BJ and just melt anyone with the the dual wield. It was so o- OP. Uh, like I won, I can't even tell you how many fucking rank duels I won just by like starting with BJ, <laughs> start with BJ, pick blood run. You know, most people will pick that because they were kind of coming into, you know, quake champions because of, yeah. because of, you know, they knew the older quakes. All right, we'll play blood run. You start off, you get the mega, you run off, you get the yellow armor, you come up, you get the mm-hmm. rocket launcher, you run over straight through <laughs> the same corridor <laughs> Get pick up the lightning gun and now you're dual wheeling lightning guns on someone. Like, how, how are they going to fucking compete? They have no chance. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. The thing is, like, they did nerf BJ a couple of times. Well, not only a couple of times, but a very like <laughs> a lot. many, many times. But at the very like the first and release, a, yeah, it was just mind boggling how his dual wheel. Like, I, I of course went to pick up either MG or just LG with BJ and immediately just. Uh, Press F and uh, aim at the enemy, mm-hmm. and he's dead in just two seconds. Whether his stack was like 300 or even, I don't know, 100 with no armor. So when you're casting Quake Champions, you, do you feel like you have a kind of a, a really good repertoire of, I've played the champions and how they work, or do you play it by ear? I'm not really sure. The thing is, like... Uh, I do like know the fundamentals of each champion and you really have to do know that as a caster. And yeah. uh, I've talked to, about this a lot. Like, do you have to be good at the game to like be like, a, for example, a commentator and uh, like on my level, I'm still like, uh, especially with this new time limit dual format, I, I went down even like 500 SR from gold 16, 17 or hundred and uh, down to like silver 1200 right now. And uh, I don't know. I still think that you don't, actually need like to be good at the game you just like know and it doesn't even take a lot to know like how to play quake and everything like that but like with the champions even with the minor things and everything it's it's vital to even know as a caster or a commentator that uh, like uh how would I say? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's basically vital to know every single thing about the champion, just to uh, commentate even a tourney like this, where like different classes matter and stuff like that. That's one of the things that I find most challenging about being a caster yeah. in general. Is that uh, I cast several different games. It's not just Quick Champions. It's Quick World. Mm. It's Glitch Arena. You know, hopefully in the future, it's uh, Quake. Three in the form of open arena. It's yeah. you know sometimes quick live, quick champions, everything, and I find it very challenging to um, be be that knowledgeable guy about everything. And I look to Jahar for influence because he's quite good at um kind of familiarizing himself with the details of a game with Doom. Doom, even mm. you know I've I've done a little bit of Doom. And to to be an expert is quite different than to be a great player, in my opinion. Mm. Yeah. Uh, for instance, you don't. If you were Jahar, um, casting Quake Champions, you you're fundamentally different than a Rafa. Rafa, yeah. you know, is is the quote unquote the greatest Quake Champions player that there is. Um. That doesn't make him the greatest caster. Jahar is not the greatest player. <laughs> and I, I, I really struggle with that balance because like, I want to be a good mm. player. I, I really truly, like I love playing these games. I want to be a great player, but I don't think that I'm ever going to be able to do both. Yeah. How do you feel? Well, I really like, 
it's been like I've, I've been theorizing, theorizing with Quake alone, like Quake's multiplayer. No matter what Quake you play, like getting good could really take like your whole lifetime. But like knowing <laughs> yeah. the uh, <laughs> exactly knowing the uh, like the game as a whole doesn't even take like perhaps a week to like even practice. But on the contrary, though, like I have Taka as my co-caster who like uh, is even in the uh, time limit duels is elite in mm-hmm. uh, or by his rank and he's like more of a uh, an analytical caster and everything like that and he he like with his experience even in like the elite ranks can know more than even i can like with the basic basic stuff what quake even quake champions is made of i try to but, take yeah. uh i try to take influence from other sports uh, in particular for me just because i'm kind of kind of connected to it pro wrestling yeah mm. the, guy, the guy who uh, just kind of does the play by play, you know, of like what this is what's happening on the screen, and that that's good. And then you have another guy who does uh, color commentary, which is the uh, more nuanced, more like in general, mm. like this is the guy who really knows the game. You you see that in pro wrestling with uh, Michael Cole and Jerry the King Lawler, right? Michael Cole. If you know, if you even know what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I I've, I've heard of Michael Cole. Yeah, I just like heard of how he's even talking. But yeah, I, so, I would say like talk us more to the person personality of Michael Cole. I guess with yeah. the uh, like he yeah. he can actually put even jokes in between every like uh, sentence he even spews out and everything like that. But yeah, right. And then you have like a JBL or a Jerry the King Lawler who is an experienced pro wrestler. Yeah. Who, who knows what's going on, right? Who's been there in that situation? They they add yeah. the color, they add the uh, th- this is what's really happening. I've been there. I know that. I feel the emotion. That, that kind of thing. We see that with Machiavelli. We see mm. that tremendously with Machiavelli. Like he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel I feel very like uh, dichotomous about him because like he played Quake Quake Two so well, like so oh, much. Yeah. <laughs> better than anyone else and then quake 3 as well you know kind of like fell under the shadow of fatality and guys like that but it, mm. ultimately like a guy who has risen to a point of respect within the quake community that he's saying like uh he, he's doing quake champions commentary and he's doing extremely well and mm. he's doing it from the perspective of a professional who's been there done that seen that and that is an added uh part of it it's really hard to do on the community level, you know. Uh, you you have your friend. I have Violent Hurt. Um, yeah, who really helps me a lot too. Yeah, I mean the thing is, like, compared to perhaps Machiavelli, I really don't even have like all the experience, or even Jitaka. I like I mostly just like rely on the knowledge and everything like that yeah. is obtained from the game, That's even if you're not playing it. Yeah, and the thing is, like, when I started casting, I just mostly tried to like take influence from like uh, zoot i believe since uh well i really i was like still a uh how would i say a pretty shy personality when i was just casting the uh, battle fight mm. uh, tournaments and i still couldn't even like put any jokes in between like every fight and everything like that i still would just uh be afraid it would take too much time or anything like that it was quick it's a very fast-paced game so but, i just like even yeah. uh, up until this day i'm just like uh, focused on what's happening on the screen and everything that's good, and that it's a an important role to fill. I think. Yeah. So, all right, we we kind of covered Quake Champions. Let's move on to some of the other things that you've covered, which are really exciting. Like, you played the build engine games a little bit. Can you talk about that? Well, uh, let's see. I did play through Duke Nukem 3D <laughs> as well as Rise of the Triad in the first season of Cult of FPS, and those are, of course, in YouTube. Yeah. I believe episode 8 was Rise of the Triad and episode 9 was then Duke Nukem 3D. But otherwise, like, uh, as far as Cult of FPS goes, I haven't played through, well, generally even, I haven't played through uh, Shadow Warrior. I haven't played through Blood, sadly, but I will. Just uh, if I just have time right after the uh, the military service and everything, but yeah. I want you to but play with- Blood. I really want you to play <laughs> Blood. <laughs> oh, you're, you're not the only one wishing that. I, I eventually will. But like, yeah, with the, I don't know. What else is there to say? Actually, like build, like Ken Silverman, for example, he got started with like uh, what was it, Ken's Labyrinth. That wasn't like exactly like the build 3D engine, I believe, but he later on just like developed the engine from that, and Apogee just uh, developed the uh, 
Well, yeah, developed Duke Nukem 3D out of that. I first, I, th I think I first said that Rise of the Triad was actually already a prototype of Bill 3D, and that might not be wrong, but it's actually like a modified version of uh, Wolfenstein 3D's engine, which right. was also meant to be, like Rise of the Triad was meant to be the sequel by Apogee to Wolfenstein 3D and Spear of Destiny. And ended up being actually on a little modified engine on it. But yeah. I don't know, like, uh, about build 3D games. Like, I actually haven't um, familiarized myself too much on those. But, like, even the Duke Nukem 3D expansions, I will eventually play in Gold to FPS. I probably have to do, like, a season where I'm going back to the past and just, like, uh, revisiting some of the uh, titles. For example, Duke Nukem 3D with, with the expansions and uh, its software's Doom, perhaps with the, uh, what is it, the master levels for Doom 2, which I also got. Um, from the Steam bundle, the Doom Classic complete while I have my Toshiba laptop. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Master Levels is obviously very fun. Uh, I definitely think you should play through Blood. I, I'm yeah. not speaking just as a member of <laughs> the Keep, but like, yeah, bl Blood is essential to the FPS genre, in my opinion. Yeah. And then, you know, Duke Nukem, great, fantastic. No one's going to argue with that. Um, Shadow Warrior, like, do you watch, uh, do you watch like, kind of some of the contemporary streamers like Civi? Civi 11 is uh, one that I bring I, up. I do, I, I don't watch, like, his streams if he actually streams, but I do watch his videos. They are hilarious, to be <laughs> honest, but. Yeah, I don't think he really streams. Is, yeah, I think yeah, yeah YouTube, but the yeah. thing is, like, his, his videos really, like, while, while they're just, like, trying to be funny, they really do have, like, all the information you need, but with Shadow Warrior, I don't know. Many people just refer it to the Chinese or Japanese Duke Nukem 3D, and Blood is basically like the Gothic Duke Nukem 3D. Then, yeah. No, Blood Blood is absolutely fantastic. I cannot speak yeah. on behalf of Shadow Warrior having not played it in its entirety, but like they're they're all incredible. I think the build engine is great. Even Ion Maiden, or quote unquote Ion Fury, was yeah, Ion uh, Fury, nowadays. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I, th I thought it was incredible as well. Uh, I just love the I love the build engine. I, I've always loved the build engine ever since I was a little boy because my dad got me kind of involved in this genre through Duke Nukem. Yeah, the thing is, like, what I mostly have from like at least Blood, as far as my streams go, is like basically all the random commands I have. For example, the laugh command and stuff like that. It randomly can't play either a laugh from Team Fortress Two or just Caleb's laugh from Blood. It's just like manacle and. I don't know, like, uh, Blood was also, like, by a different uh, developer. Like, what was yes. it again? Monolith, yeah. And Monolith was, uh, like, they ha actually haven't released the source code yet, and I have bought the uh, the Fresh Supply edition by mm -hmm. um, Night Dive Studios. And I believe it's as close as you can actually get to a remaster of Blood, perhaps. Like, a retro remaster. And they've done a very good job. Like, the first release I did play, and it, it was a little buggy, to say the least, but they have fixed most of the bugs, I can tell. But I oh. still have yet to play it through Blood in my series, and I don't know if it's going to be the DOS version or Fresh Supply. What else is on your list of games to play? Like, uh, Night Dive. Yeah. You brought up Night Dive. Like, they're kind of the quintessential, in my mind, uh, um, remasterers of classic FPS. They, System Shock 2... Um, to rock and to rock too, even yeah, like they they've done a lot, and I really I I've played through a little bit of system their their remake of System Shock. I really think it's incredible, uh, but I would like to know what like what's on your mind as far as FPS games go. Like what going forward, what do you plan to kind of expand on or or play or invest your time in? Well, I really don't know. Like the thing is. There's so many of those, like even older games from the 90s alone. Like, uh, I had bought before even I started my series. I had bought uh, most of the uh, the very classics, like especially like from the classic FPS era, as I call it, before Half Life, uh, like Dooms, uh, Quakes, basically all the Quakes except the uh, the fourth one, and then um, well, yeah, there's Shadow Warrior, Duke Nukem 3D, Blood, uh, Rise of the Triad, Blake Stone. There's so many of them, but like I, I thought to myself. Since I had streamed like some other games, for example, Overwatch, and even in 2017 or 2018, um, Quake Champions, I, I thought to myself that the only way I'm actually going to like play all these through is I'm going to show them, like 
basically to all the people that I'm just going to play them through just to prove it that I have actually played these through. But otherwise, like I had, I had played through like Doom already and Quakes already and uh, Duke Nukem 3D, the first two episodes, I believe. But yeah, I didn't actually play through Wolfenstein or anything like that. And I just thought, yeah, why not? I'm just going to establish a whole series about these. And in the meantime, I just really uh, got into the uh, the history of them as well. So do you feel like an obligation to play through all the old, you know, the old school FPSs? Well, yeah, you could say that. I mean, it's really become an obsession, really, because it's mm. it's my passion, to be honest. That's good. And the <laughs> thing is, like, uh, people have been wondering since, like, uh, well, for example, to the listeners who just uh, hear my voice right now, I'm actually just much younger than you might think, because I... It already started in Overwatch with even my accent and everything that I just speak like a Texan, even when I'm casting and everything like that. But like, uh, it started with Overwatch when I just uh, first, I don't know, communicated, really communicated in a team game with people, with Europeans. And they really like, I don't know, they <laughs> they said my English was super good. And I, are, are you from America? They asked all the time and everything like that. But yeah, I actually have been living in Finland for like all my life, and I'm only 19. Like all my 19 years, I've been living in Finland. I've never been to the U.S., and I hopefully will eventually during maybe some QuakeCon or something like that. Yeah, we'll but bring you to Texas QuakeCon. for QuakeCon so that everyone can <laughs> think that you're a native. <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, like, uh, but especially like, yeah, with my age, it's really fascinating how I've just gotten super interested to classic FPS all of a sudden. It was basically yeah, when I was 12, I really got inter- interested in Doom. I got like interested in how the modding was and everything. I even played Skulltech as the first source port I had. <laughs> and uh, it was already... <laughs> I believe like Skulltech did get already like uh, discontinued in 2010. I can't, I can't remember, but it, and I still played it like in 2012. And I only played it with bots, <laughs> to be honest. But I still like got myself even to the uh, m- the multiplayer of Doom with that. That was really fascinating. Did you did you hear the uh, Carnival appearance on? Oh Sydney? yes, I did. Yeah, yeah like uh, such an integral part of multiplayer Doom's history, and which I had no yeah. idea about. Like I went to QuakeCon completely unaware of this at all, and I just ran into by complete accident. I ran into into Carnival through Doom from uh, the uh, Multiplayer Doom Federation. Yeah, and yeah, like. It's such an incredible journey to kind of get through all of this and to really learn the history of it. And I, that's something that I ex- respect um, tremendously about you. And that I find that you and I have a similar vein in is that we both are on this sort of journey to both uncover the past and also unveil the future at the same time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, you could even say when Quake, or even when Doom was released, I was a negative seven years old. <laughs> and the thing is, like, uh, I, don't, I don't really know. Like, I sometimes do feel, like, the uh, the jealousy, even towards the players, especially who lived during the 90s, throughout the whole 90s, perhaps. Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake era, and stuff like that. I really do feel the jealousy for them, just, like, living through the, uh, the excellent releases of those games. Since what do you get out of, like, these days? as much as like you did get in the 90s probably like not so much i would say as you did from doom or quake or stuff like that it was revolutionary titles fundamentally disagree i think that yeah. uh those people um would have benefited from fiber internet <laughs> and youtube <laughs> well, that's and true. twitch and yeah, on all, the country, all the there's that side yeah <laughs> like i yeah i would have loved to have been there for the release of duango but I mean, fuck off, man. I got Twitch. I got YouTube. I got everything. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we got so much more exposure and with, okay. yeah. you know, than they exactly. could have ever dreamed of. Yeah, maybe I have something to flex with after all. But the thing, <laughs> the thing is, like, uh, well, even back then, like, even though, like, 56K modems and even, like, some cases, like, even the cable connections were mediocre enough, especially the 56K if you were to play Quake and... Uh, yeah, let's just say your mom had a call on the phone and just like you were completely just yelling at your mom. It's like, don't answer the phone because you were just playing a game in the meantime. If she did answer the phone, then your ping would just go over a thousand or something like that. Yeah, we don't have to deal with that. 
And yeah. that's a good benefit. We have the we are privileged to be able to go back through these old games with ease, with the mm-hmm. absolute ease of just you know Steam or whatever. You know, grab the wads, and the, even though that's a pain in the ass to me, it was a pain in the ass to even learn how to like deal with wad files and everything. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to just playing The Witcher 3, which is just like, download it and play. Happy fucking New Year to you. <laughs> and then, you know, um, but it, it's also a pleasure to, to deal with, like, learning the history and learning how to, how to do shit that I don't want to do. And then, um, Blood Fresh Supply, like, even, you know, like, I originally started playing Blood on, uh, GDX. And, yeah. Honestly, like Fresh Supply, just being a pay a few bucks and play the whole game, mm. it's better. And even I, the yeah, I, even I, the expansions like Cryptic Passage and stuff like that. If yeah. you wanted to, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Like I, I just want to play the game as mm. it's as it's meant to be played. Maybe it's a little bit different than the original version, but holy shit, is it convenient? And that that is what we hold over the previous generation is convenience, um, which yeah. we shouldn't take for granted either yeah it's really interesting and like I, I really do look forward to like playing through like the rest of the build engine games but like i really like i do have to say like with the uh, military service i am gonna start it like on january and i don't know how long it will take it could take like either six months nine months or 12 months possibly nine and uh, it'll pass by least likely I'll... six yeah so it'll, much it'll, faster yeah. than you think <laughs> But yeah, like aside from like gaming and stuff like that, I am interested in like, uh, I don't know, IT and stuff like that. Because I I have even like built like some desktop PCs, not only for myself, but also for my brother and uh, let's see, a couple of my friends. Yeah. And to say the least, like, I don't know much about programming if I'm super interested about that, that but like uh, I have programmed like, for example, in my Doom mod, my Deathmatch mod, which I'm going to get to. In just a moment, I have program, programmed uh, Decorate, but that's about it. But otherwise, yeah, I really don't know like how long I'll be offline since I'm at the military. But yeah, it's okay, man. Like, trust me, it'll it'll go by so much faster than you, than you could possibly <laughs> imagine. Yeah, and then you'll be back into it, or you'll you know focus, obviously focus on your school and on that shit. But mm. you'll you'll be back. We we we're, we'll be waiting for you. And I'm kind of curious as well, like the the newer games that are on your mind, because like, obviously I'm wearing a dust shirt right now for anybody who can't see it. Um, War Fork, not really new, but a an expansion of an older game that has yeah. made its um, place in the world. There's yeah. Doombringer, there's Red Eclipse, there's Glitch Arena, there's so many uh, new games on the horizon. I'm kind of curious, like, what has your attention right now? Well, I'm really sure there's like so many, like, focusing even towards the uh, classic FPS era, especially Dusk. I mean, Dusk, no doubt about that. But, and I have played through that as well. I even streamed that on my channel. But it's already been a year. It's kind of like stunning. That's like already passed so much by. But yeah, let's see. I really don't know about. Like uh, the rest of, well, I do own a couple in DFPS as well. First is like, uh, let's see, Project Warlock, which I haven't installed. Uh, Void Bastards also. And some of them I believe I have on GOG, but like on Steam. Yeah, those are what I currently have. Also, uh, let's see, Warlock Revenge, which is not like a uh, a previous part of Project Warlock, but it's just like an outer, like Wolfenstein styled. I would say like Heretic and Wolfenstein. That's what Warlock Revenge is. But like I've been thinking the same with my like indie FPS collection as well as with the classic FPS or like the retro FPS. Like if I'm gonna play these through ever, I'm just gonna like again like stream them and yeah make a stream about it, show them that it's actually been played. Yeah. Um. I can't really think of anything else that we haven't covered. <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, well, I could tell, like, there yeah, I've few. been doing, like, yeah, I've been there. doing, like, like so much in the uh, stream series as a whole, but, like, I don't know, it's been, like, one and a half years already when I started it, and 
the the episodes basically go like there's basically one episode per game yeah there's like or one game per episode so episode 38 means just 38 games played through and that's fascinating already what i've accomplished in just like one and a half years i've just played 38 games through and i don't know but aside from that aside from the series i uh like when i started the series i had just gotten my driving license as well and everything like that but also like i was still in the middle of high school basically at the very end of it too yeah because it was summer and my third year was already starting i had to do like the final exams and everything like that but uh in high school i did like a, a diploma in musics and that just basically covered midi and i have just done like even many midi songs aside from my diploma which included only five tracks i believe i made like a uh a MIDI version or a MIDI remix transcription of uh, Seek It Destroy by Metallica and as well as, uh, let's see, Nirvana's, uh, what is it now? Come As You Are. And uh, let's see. But aside from that, even like, uh, I've been imagining how Quake 2, for example, because it has CD soundtrack by, made by Sonic Mayhem. And uh, to play the soundtrack in game, you just like had the CD in. But like, I was wondering, like, uh, what if Quake 2 soundtrack was um, having a MIDI, MIDI alternative? Because uh, some uh, 90s games, perhaps not only FPS, but also like many 90s, uh, other 90s games, did have that option. For example, Blood from like FPS games, as well as Hexen 2, had the uh, MIDI option if you didn't have the CD in and everything like that. So I was like imagining with Quake 2, like I, I did a MIDI of Operation Overlord with that track, and it came out pretty much fantastic. Why don't you send me uh, the MIDI that you're most proud of, and we'll yeah, I can do that. that. We'll have that as your oh, play yeah, in most and proud play of. out music. Hmm. Yeah, well, well, I really don't. There's so many I've composed, and there's so many that I've just like still have work in progress. But yeah, I don't know. No, we'll we'll have that uh, play you in and out of the podcast because I always do that with every episode. It's kind of like I try to. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it's just random shit. Sometimes yeah. it's uh, from the game that's being played or talked about. Sometimes it's just whatever you want. But if you have something that you legitimately feel like, I always try to in- involve music in the podcast in some way. So hmm. please, yeah, definitely send me, send me something. Yeah, I could, I could do like uh, I could send you the Operation Overlord, maybe like a shortened version of it. But mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I wanted to talk about like how I did the uh, diploma, basically, because I, as a kid, I think it was like when I was uh, 10 or 11 years old, during those years, I uh, I played the piano and uh, tried to like learn it uh, through a teacher and everything like that. And uh, during those days, uh, the teacher noticed, as well as my dad noticed, who also plays the accordion for his job, he noticed that I have like an absolute pitch in my ear, which basically means that if I just press, for example, a random key on the keyboard or piano, and without looking, I can tell what note it is. And it's fascinating. And that's how I did my diploma. I did it with no notes. I didn't even like get any notes for Seek and Destroy, for example. And then, uh, yeah, basically, uh, just listen to the original song, either from Spotify or YouTube, like how the song basically went and everything. I just knew what the notes were. And that was impressive. You can you can test that. You have a ukulele there. There we go. Okay, so, play notes. <laughs> it's a little bit out of tune, but uh, okay. I believe that's somewhere around the E. Mm. Uh, that's okay. So your dad plays the accordion. Yeah. Professionally. I could say, yeah, professionally. He doesn't, like, teach anybody to, like, play it, but, yeah, he does, like, do gigs and everything like that all over Finland. That That's really fucking cool. So your dad was a musician his whole life? Yeah, he still is, actually. And the thing is, he's been a musician for maybe even 40 years. <clears throat> but the thing is, he did have um, kind of the same pitch on his ear, but it wasn't, like, as evolved as mine was. Like, I, it was right. mine is just on absolute Perf- level. Perfect pitch, they call it. Yeah, yeah, or absolute pitch. But that's how I did my diploma, and that's how I've done every single MIDI I've done. I wish I could, like, prove it somehow, but that's how I've just done it. And that's a C. It's a bit out of tune, but that's a C. <laughs> it's so out of tune, man, that my ukulele is fucked. <laughs> but yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, I did try 
I don't want to talk about my Doom mod since I did try and uh, make my own Doom mod basically and with all like my own levels as well. I did try making midis for that and I did try making my like a couple of weapons. It was like almost a total conversion, but like still a megawatt, I guess, or 32 level megawatt. And uh, I did make the weapons, I did make the plasma machine gun or the double barreled plasma gun. I say, like the, the first name is what I call it, but yeah. I did make that in there, as well as the triple barrel rocket launcher, which just shot three rockets in a burst. And uh, I also did uh, compose the midis for it, but I never like got into doom mapping, to be honest. And so, like, uh, in 2016, I believe, I started it on late 2015, but in 2016, I really thought, like, I cannot make a single level. I really, it took time and, like, took time to, like, even learn. How much do I have to pay you to... Uh stick the Cathala logo into your Doom maps. <laughs> just I just don't know. throw her on the wall. Just bam. <laughs> right here, maybe on the backs of the shotgun uh, bullets, you know, like when you, you actually put the shells in, bam, there's a Cathala logo on the mm. wall when you're walking towards the exit. Cathala <laughs> logo. Like, what, 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 do, you, what do you charge? <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, the, the thing is, like, there's only... I believe I scratched the map, but I didn't scratch the whole mod. I, or the uh, the wad. And uh, it's only been a few months where I just, like, got inspired, like, to code in Doom again. And I, I was, like, thinking what the the weapons of Doom felt like if they had the exact same uh, projectiles or bullets or pellets from the shotguns uh, as the super shotgun did. And I tried it with a pistol with even the same spread as Super Shanga did. It was, it was powerful. And it was like, I wanted to mess around. It wasn't like nothing too balanced, nothing balanced at all, to be honest. But like, it was, pistol was basically a Super Shagun that just fired like a pistol with the same fire as well. Chain gun with the uh, fire of the chain gun. And uh, let's see, the projectile weapons, the rocket launcher and plasma gun and BFG fired like 20. <laughs> 20 uh, projectiles each uh, in the spray of like the uh, the super shotgun and then with the shotguns themselves i divided or like not divided but i multiplied the uh, the number of the pellets for example with the shotgun there was seven pellets i div- uh, multiplied a uh, seven times 20 and that ended up, <laughs> ended up being super good it was 140 pellets with the shotgun i don't know i don't know what was going in my mind but I, eventually i Somehow got making uh, or got to making a deathmatch mod out of it with the weapons and a vanilla deathmatch mod. And it's only the weapons. I never, I still don't even make any maps for it. But I, I have tested the uh, the mod itself and it's gone to, through many iterations. I even even tried the rocket launcher that fired two rockets at once. It ended up being the triple barrel rocket launcher I had in Cataclysm. That's what it, the uh, the first mod was called that I had the level on, but. Yeah, and then the plasma machine gun or the double barrel plasma gun and BFG was just it's a really random weapon basically, but it's it's powerful. I don't know. I ba- basically even with the shotguns I made uh the super shotgun fire 40 pellets, so double the amount of the regular pellets 20. And then uh the regular shotgun again doubled the amount of pellets and the pistol is now a yellow boy instead at Winchester. <laughs> Which is, is still a powerful weapon. I just wanted to make like a single shot weapon that almost fired like a shotgun, but was like a variation between, well, the pistol and the shotgun, I guess. And then the chain gun feels like Quake too. It spools up to double the fire rate, I guess. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, awesome. I don't know. Yeah, it is. I I have yet to test the mod. I I did show Nationwide Moose, by the way, the uh, the mod. I don't know. He hasn't answered yet, like with anything, if he has actually tested it, but. Also, like, Magicide from Quake Angels Discord did say that this mod is really, really cool. And he actually helped me to improve it. He had actually uh, been modding uh, Doom himself a bit I, with the uh, deathmatch. I can't say that Nation One Moose has played it up until now, but after this podcast, I guarantee you he will. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I did all of that. I modified all of that. In just a span of a few months, it hasn't even been half a year, and that's amazing. Like I, I didn't, I, I actually exceeded my expectations. Like how much this would actually take, and it just ended up being a very good mod. Then I added sounds, then I added like new sprites and everything, and that's it. I have tested it on even like on Dwango map packs and uh, Aeon DM and stuff like that. 
It's really good. I really hope so. And I can't wait to try it out for myself. Mm. Do you have anything else to say? Like we we're about an hour or so in at this point. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know. The thing is, like, nothing comes to mind right now. I believe there have been some topics that we actually haven't like talked about, and I really wish to talk about. Go, them. go ahead. Yeah, no, we, we no, can they, talk. They as just long don't as come to mind right now. But no, no, no. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I'll, I'll I'll search. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so. For instance, all right, we talked a lot about Quake Champions. We talked a lot about uh, y- your journey through Gold to FPS. Yeah. We haven't talked a lot about uh, your kind of reason why you play these games. Like, you, you, you said that mm. you tried out Doom at an early age. Like, really think about it. Why do you gravitate towards older really, or classic or retro FPS games? Because that's just, it's such a niche genre, man. Not everybody can say I think that. it's yeah, I think all of that just comes to the the will to learn maybe like where the roots are coming from, I guess, like especially with doom and Wolfen's time, but like I don't know like uh, well example when i uh, when I played doom in my laptop in twenty twelve i i the, that was actually like the probably the second time I played the ultimate doom, but at doom two, it was again the atmosphere, I guess, and everything like that. That just like picked me in and just like got really interested that even in nineties games were still like this and I don't know. But still like we're very revolutionary in some cases. For example, with but I it's it's hard to explain why I really I guess it's just the will to learn the roots of it. The, the history basically. No, it's it's a lot. It's so much. Yeah. Like I you're talking to the right guy because I'm discovered these games at around the same time and mm. How am I gonna realistically be an expert on all of these games? It's very yeah. difficult, you know. To to be an expert on Quake World is insurmountable. To be an expert on Doom, even more insurmountable. I just learned about uh, Plasma Bump, you know, like that kind of. Oh shit. yeah, yeah. SR, yeah, SR50, like, all that shit. It's like, holy crap, how much are you going to fucking throw at me? Mm. I mean, to say the least, I still have a lot to learn. Like, I'm still pretty much this young, and I haven't even gone through every single FPS there is. I mean, especially from the 90s, but um, what are I your do favorites? feel like a, from the classic FPS genre. I would say perhaps, like, well... There's no doubt Quake has to be first, but after that, I'm really not sure. Like, the very direct competitor of it, I guess, Unreal, has to be. Because I, I, even in my Season 3, I really tend to call that the Cold War of FPS, since there was just like two superpowers, it's software and Epic Games, with their superb technology and everything, fighting neck and neck, and just like trying to take the uh, the crown like which is more revolutionary than just like, I don't know, the other. And yeah, that Fortnite. just goes through. Fortnite is the <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> but the thing is, like, uh, with the first Quake, that was like uh, directly even competing with the first Unreal, since Unreal got delayed a bit, to say the least. And Unreal was supposed to be like uh, an inspiration from Doom. And... Uh, Possibly the first ever, like, through truly 3D FPS, at least on the PC. And so, uh, I don't know, it ended up being Quake instead of Unreal, just got delays and everything like that. And uh, it was only until, like, Unreal Tournament, which was supposed to be, like, an expansion for the first Unreal, just to remedy the netcode issues of it. It ended up being, like, a standalone release instead and competing with Quake 3 Arena. And those two games released in just a span of two weeks and our real tournament was first it software got the pressure that quake 3 was not going to be as good as unreal tournament because it had even like all those weapons all those great maps that those great graphics and everything but it ended up, ended up being like even better in terms of gameplay and like i don't know the fundamentals of an arena fps i guess just lie within quake's grasp as always number one favorite arena first person shooter of all time go Hmm. You're, on, you're on the spot. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. It's really, really tough. There's so many around. I would have to say 
Quake 3 or Live. They're both pretty similar, but they still have their differences. Quake Live, I'd have to say, it still has like, well, I wouldn't say better mod- mod- modability, but as, maybe as good of a modability as Quake 3 already did. And it's like supported by well, Steam Workshop even these days and stuff like that. So I would say with the freedom of the community and like even the gameplay of it, albeit a little bit changed from Quake 3, I would say like it's probably the uh, the best FPS arena FPS in my opinion or number one for me. All right, non Quake, non Quake, non id mm. software, non id software game or arena FPS game. I really don't know. I'm almost gonna say Dusk with the uh, like well, if, even in the in, in the FPS genre, but I don't know. Even Unreal Tournament 2004, even though it had its own like onslaught mode and everything like that, which just like wasn't, it was only a, a, a objective vehicle mode. I would still say the deathmatch and everything was really good, and even captured the flag. But I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Unreal Tournament 2004. Doom mod, favorite Doom mod. Hmm. Russian Overkill, <laughs> perhaps. It's it's really fascinating. I mean, Russian Overkill hasn't been developed for like a long time, hasn't it? But yeah, I don't know. I just love playing big like uh, Doom maps for just as Holy Hell or Okablock with Russian Overkill, just for the sake of those weapons and the destruction. Just to like, I don't know. It's it's very good, a very good mod to kill some time, and like another very good map pack to kill some time. Favorite. Yeah. Non AAA arena first person shooter. Oh, I guess I would say Dusk. It's really like I I did try the multiplayer, but I never got like really. I don't even play it like today, like on a day to day basis. But I, it's still very good. I would say it it's is very akin to the classic Quake. It has a lot to offer. It just needs. Fuck you, Dave Szymanski. Fuck you, <laughs> Dave Oshry. If they can hear me. <laughs> for not releasing the SDK. We need it. Um, yeah. Very badly. I'm wearing a Dusk shirt right now. Fucking please. <laughs> but yeah, it has a lot to offer. Dusk has so much yeah. to offer. Um, for me, I'm just kind of here for the ride. And I hope you are too, man.